Cut to later in the day, Randy and Sandy are hitchhiking. Cut to Lenny and Sweetie motoring along in the ice cream truck. The interior of the truck. Lenny says, yeah, but wouldn't blue suspenders hold up his pants just as good? <laughs> Sweetie says, you can't examine these things too closely. They see Sandy and Randy hitchhiking. <clears throat> Lenny says, I think I'm seeing things. Says, You're not alone. There are two Laverne's. <laughs> <coughs> and they're blonde. Squiggy said, says, I always thought they'd look better as a blonde. They slow down to a stop. Squiggy says, they're not Laverne. Then he says, yeah, but her clothes are sure catching on. <laughs> and he says, are you boys going to California? He says, if we wasn't, we would be. <laughs> Come on, girls, and leave all hope behind. The girls both squeeze into the front of the truck. Sandy sits between Lenny and Squiggy, who is driving. Sandy is forced by circumstance to sit on Lenny's lap. And Lenny smiles and stares off into space. <clears throat> Squiggy commenting on Lenny's bliss. Says, We're splitting the driving, you know that, don't you? <laughs> Cut to a graphic reading, number nine, mission accomplished. <laughs> Cut to shots of Hollywood landmarks, Roman Chinese theater, Hollywood and Vine, the Sunset Strip. <coughs> we see the Vernon Shirley driving down Hollywood Boulevard. We see them checking out the cement foot footprints, placing their own feet in them. We see Lenny Squiggy. Randy and Sandy pull up in front of the entrance to Union, Union Station in the ice cream truck. <laughs> and then he says, well, here we are, girls, Union Station. Squiggy says, are you sure you don't want to check in with us at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel? <laughs> Randy says, no, this is definitely the last stop. Sandy says, definitely. Let me open the passenger door. Then he says, well, here we are, girls, Union Station. <coughs> Squiggy says, you sure you don't want to check in with us at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel? <laughs> Randy says, no, this is definitely the last stop. Randy says, definitely. Then he says, opening the passenger door, allow me to help you girls out of our little carriage. <laughs> Squiggy says, and may I say, it's been an honor and a privilege. Randy turns towards Squiggy, cutting off his sentence with a right hook to the jaw, knocking him down. Lenny reaches out to help him up, and Sandy knees Lenny in the groin. After they both receive a fairly thorough pummeling, we cut to Laverne and Shirley driving and parking in front of Cowboy Bills. <coughs> Shirley says, are you sure this is the right address? Laverne says, 1435 Coenga. That's the address Pop gave me. Laverne, this is not a pizzeria. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Cut to the interior of Cowboy Bills. Frank and Edna are in Western Guard. Frank is taking an overweight customer's order. All right, let me see if I got it right, pal. Okay. A full slab of ribs, a double order of cheese fries, baked beans, and garlic bread. A Diet Coke. <laughs> Frank says, Diet Coke? Diet Coke. Frank says, like that's going to help? <laughs> he turns in his order. Laverne calls out. Pop! Frank turns to see her. Muffin! They approach each other and hug. Cosmo says, sounds good. Bring me a blueberry muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley joins in the hugging. Shirley says, Mr. Duff, Mr. DeFazio, it's so good to see you. Ed Nant is from the kitchen area. And he says, Laverne, Shirley, they all hug. Frank to Ed Nant says, he also wants a blueberry muffin. <laughs> Edna, got it. Laverne, Laverne says, you told us this was a pizza place. Edna says, well, it was, but we had to make some changes. 
Uh, yeah, it changes. <laughs> and it, it, uh, it was becoming a health hazard. Uh, yeah, health hazard. And it, some young guy came in and ordered a pizza with pineapples on it. Right, so, so I was going to wrap them in the mouth. I cocked my fist. And it says, and it landed in someone's mustard chole. <laughs> right, so, turns out a lot of people like pineapple on their pizzas out here. It's sacrilegious. <clears throat> and so, so we became Cowboy Billy. I love it out here already. <clears throat> Cut to Zuma Beach. We see the Hudson driving along Pacific Coast Highway. We hear Frank's voiceover. So, did you do anything yet? We hear Laverne say, no. Frank says, look, you'll stay with us till you get settled. Why don't you go out to the beach? Trips at the beach. Sure, you could go to Malibu, where all the stars are. They let anyone go there. <laughs> Cut to a graphic reading number 10, The Seeds of Discontent. Cut to Laverne and Shirley lying on the beach in bathing suits, both pale white. <laughs> it's nice out here. Shirley says, sure it is. And we'll get an apartment, we'll each have a bedroom and we won't have to look up to see people. They don't have basements here. <clears throat> they don't? So I said, no, I checked. Well, that's good. So I said, look at all the gorgeous men. Look at all the gorgeous women. We don't have a chance here. We're not tall or blonde or built. Surely, yeah. And some of the gorgeous men seem to be more interested in the other gorgeous men. <laughs> I, I think we'll have to find the cut rate beach. Cut to Laverne and Shirley's new apartment. Girls are unpacking, putting dishes in cabinets and hanging pictures. Shirley says, isn't it everything I said it would be? A pool, a patio, no basement. Laverne says, Cheryl. I'm sorry. I mean, you've tried so hard to make it pleasant. And you have. It's very nice out here. I'm, I'm glad we came. An earthquake hits. <laughs> the carpet begins to rumble and shake. Dishes come, come out of the cabinets and break. Pictures fly off the walls. The girls are scrambling for cover. The movement stops. The bird says, Forget the last thing I say. <laughs> Cut to Dodgers Stadium, night. A baseball game is in progress. The stands are full. Laverne is seated next to an empty seat in the bleachers. A beach ball is being batted around the bleachers. It lands on Laverne's head. She shoes it away. Laverne to the crowd. If you want to keep hitting a beach ball, why don't you go to the beach? <laughs> Shirley comes down the aisle with a large quantity of ballpark food and a cardboard tray. She sits down next to Laverne. Laverne says, Cheryl, how are we going to eat all that? Shirley says, oh, I'm sorry, did you want something? <laughs> Laverne says, it, it's all right. Shirley begins scarfing down all the food. Laverne notices what's going on in the field. It's a 1-1 tie in the seventh inning. Dodgers have the bases loaded and two out. The batter has a 3-0 count on him. He swings at the next pitch and pops up to third, ending the inning. Laverne rising to her feet and yelling to the batter, What are you swinging? The guy hasn't thrown a strike in a month. <laughs> and Laverne says, I don't think he can hear you. Uh, Shirley continues eating. Laverne says, Can you hear me? The fan uh, Then shut the hell up! <laughs> there is the beginning of a mass exodus from the park. Laverne to Shirley says, It's a tie game and everybody's leaving in the eighth inning. Don't they know they play nine? <laughs> Laverne to the player. This is why you left Ebbets Field? <laughs> Shirley is still eating. Laverne to Shirley. This, this city doesn't deserve this team. The Dodgers should be in Brooklyn where they belong. <clears throat> Cut to Santa Monica Beach. The graphic reads two years later. 
Laverne and Shirley are lying on the beach wearing bathing suits. A graphic reads, number 11, world's turn. Laverne says, so let me see if I have it straight, Shirley. The idea is to work at something enjoyable, make a lot of money at it, and have it provide scads of opportunities to meet eligible men. You just won't let it die. <laughs> I mean, gift wrapping at, at the department store takes care of the first two. We still have a shot at the trifecta. A very nice looking young man, Robert, approaches them. Robert says, excuse me. You two girls didn't happen to notice a scalpel lying around here, did you? Sure. A scalpel? Are you married? <laughs> uh, no. Sure. But you're a doctor? Uh, no, but I, I'm going to be one when I graduate medical school next year. Sure. Don't just sit there, Laverne! Help me find the man's scalpel! <laughs> Cut to a fairly elaborate wedding reception. Robin and Shirley are cutting the wedding cake. Shirley is feeding it to Robert. At separate times during Robert's speech, we cut to Lenny and Squiggy, already all dressed up in tears. <laughs> cut to Robert about to address the assembled gathering. <clears throat> Just before we go, I'd like to tell you about our immediate plans. We're driving down to Mexico, where I'm going to finish up my last two semesters at Juarez State University Medical School. Then I'll have my degree, and I'll become Dr. Robert Meany. And Shirley will become Mrs. Dr. Shirley Feeney Meany. <laughs> and then we, have, uh, we plan to hit the city of Omaha, Nebraska by storm. It's my hometown. You know, local boy makes good. Thank you all for coming. Now it's time for us to start down life's highway. Cut to the exterior of the church. Uh, the wedding cu couple's car is all decorated. Shirley and Robert drive away. Cut to Laverne waving, waving along with the others, tears streaming down their cheeks. Cut to exterior Mexican restaurant, outdoor cafe. The graphic reads Juarez, eight months later. Shirley is wearing a waitress's uniform that has a Mexican flavor, <coughs> carrying a, a tray with drinks on it. Says, Here you go, four margaritas. <laughs> she serves them to the customers. The phone rings from behind the bar. The bartender in the bar. Pedro's. <coughs> She's busy. All right, hang on. Shirley, it's for you. She picks up the phone. Hello? Intercut Shirley and Robert. Robert's calling from the campus of Juarez <coughs> University. Shirley, drop what you're doing and come on up here. They're about, about to post the final grades. With any luck, we'll be out of here. I, I want you to share this moment with me. I'm on my way. She bolts it to her car and drives off. Cut to the exterior of the medical school building. Cut to Shirley and Robert looking at the sheet posted on the bill bulletin board. Cut to close-up of the sheet. The names are listed in order of descending grades. Number one, Carlos Hernandez, 95. Number two, Jose, Jose Luis Gonzalez, 93. We continue down the list of Mexican sounding names and grades, heading down to the low 80s. Number 49 is Candida Sanchez, with a score of 81. The last and final number, number 50, is Robert Mini, with a score of 68. Robert says, we passed! We're a doctor! <laughs> he hugs Shirley and whirls her around. <coughs> Shirley says, that's great! I married a doctor! Shirley says, uh, uh, darling, were in English, weren't they? Uh, Rob says, that's all we speak on campus. Shirley is still trying to figure out the 68. Oh. Cut to exterior Omaha City Hospital. Cut to interior ER. Doctors and nurses, including Robert, are working on a patient feverishly. Shirley appears at the window of the ER. Robert sees her, and with the hand that had been covering the patient's artery, waves at her. <laughs> Robert has blood is spurting into his eye. Hi, Shirley! 